if you want, psyched. Victor Davis Hansen is a senior fellow at the Hoover Institute, and we're always happy to have him on. Professor, thanks a lot for coming. Thank you. So Thank you. you can shoot heroin, but you can't have Thanksgiving dinner. What are we looking at? Well, I think there's a lot of takeaways. I think after nine months of lockdowns of various sorts that our state authorities, especially in blue states, really don't know have any answers. They can't tell us about this mysterious virus, the degree of susceptibility right. of certain people with blood types or vitamin D levels or the methods of the most severe transmissions. And so in, in that lacuna of knowledge, they go back to what they've always done, a series of lockdowns. They said, well, look at Europe. They did it. Well, Europe's got an explosive rates just like we do, and we're not doing any differently, uh, faring any much different than Spain, Italy, Belgium, the UK. And so that lack of knowledge, it, they have to do something because they're, they're people who do something, and they never tell us. This is the lethality rate. This is the cost-benefit analysis if we shut down in terms of substance abuse, familial abuse, missed schools, missed procedures. And I'm afraid they're going to have massive civil disobedience because of, for them to have credibility, Tucker, they cannot be hypocritical. They have to be disinterested. But think of a, a marquee official, a Nancy Pelosi, a Gavin Newsom, a, a Governor Whitmer, uh, Governor, all of these people have violated their own edicts. They go to hairdressers, they put their kids in private school, and they say no people can go to, they have to go to restaurants. And so they're asking the public uh, to obey edicts that they don't feel apply to themselves. And when you apply that to protest, all summer, Tucker, we saw people out in the street, no social distancing, no mask, no cleanser, spraying and screaming. And we even had health pro uh, professionals who signed a letter and said, you know, it's more deleterious to the health of certain groups uh, not to protest than to risk the virus. And in, on victory night of the supposed Biden victory, everybody was out there protesting. Nobody said a word. And then to come down and say, we're going to go into the inner sancta of a person's home, so much for your home as a castle, and we're going to start monitoring your behavior in a way we surely didn't when you attacked state property out in the street in Portland. And so they're not going to have a lot of compliance. And there's a slippery slope, I think, that if they can come into your house and say, you have to wear a mask, why not just say, well, you know, when was your last prostate exam or your breast exam? Or did you brush your teeth and do you have deleterious bacteria that could get into your heart? And we want to see this information. And so I'm not, I know that sounds absurd, but once you start dictating what a person can do inside the confines of their own home, and you're not consistent and you're ideological, then you're not going to have widespread complacence, uh, compliance. Excuse me. And it, there is a pattern, Tucker. It's a blue state and landscape, a blue mayor, a blue state governor, who tends to focus on traditional gatherings like Thanksgiving or Christmas or church gatherings. It's not really the governor of Oklahoma or Utah going into the corporate boardroom or going into the university lounge and trying to say, we're going to enforce this upon you. So whether that's fair or not, there's an ideological suspicion that it's not equally applied. Well, exactly. Most Americans want to follow the rules, but the rules have to be reasonable and fair.